picture description. Choose 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 the statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Sure, sure. Be in the picture. In the picture. Number one. A. The fuel gauge is close to empty. B. The gauge says full. C. The gauge shows that the tank is half empty. D. The gauge is shaped like a circle. Number 2. A. The traffic light says go straight. B. The traffic sign means do not turn right. C. The sign tells you to not turn left. D. The sign means slow down. Number 3. A. This is a book. B. This is a map. C. This is a magazine. D. This is a brochure. Number 4. A. The pilots are in the cockpit. B. The airplane is taking off. C. The airplane is landing. D. The rocket is landing. Number 5. A. The man is looking through a telescope. B. He is looking through binoculars. C. He is looking at the microscope. D. This man is looking for the microscope. Part 2. 2. 2. Two. Questions, questions, and responses. Questions. Responses. 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 Listen questions to the questions. Responses. Listen, listen, listen to the questions and choose listen. the best answer. Best questions. answer. Best answer. Number one. Have you seen my glasses? I can't find them anywhere. A. They're on your desk. B. Yes, I have. Thank you. C. You're wearing them, stupid. Number two. What a strange looking animal. What is it? A. I think it's called a bull cat. B. It's just a dog. C. Yes, of course, it's a cat. Number 3. What is the name of the planet in our solar system with the most prominent ring system? A. It's Saturn. B. His name is Venus. C. Yes, you're right. Number 4. How can you know so much about rocks? A. I study geology. B. I love rock music. C. On the rocks, please. Number 5. Can I borrow your magnifying glass sometime? A. Yes, it was terrifying. B. Sure. When do you need it? C. Yes, it's mystifying. Part 3. Short Conversations. 
Choose the best answer to each question. Questions 1 through 3 refer to the fo 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 following con con conversation. What's that magazine you were looking at? Who's that woman in the picture? That's Madame Curie. I'm sure you've heard about her. She was a famous scientist. She studied physics. Never heard of her. Anyway, I couldn't stand physics in high school. It was my worst subject. Yeah, me too. I still don't get it. But this Madame Curie was quite a woman. Number one. What are the man and woman looking at? A. A program on TV. B. A magazine. C. A journal. D. A scientific paper. Number two. What is true about the woman? A. She hasn't heard of Madame Curie. B. She was good at physics. C. She was keen on physics. D. She thinks highly of Madame Curie. Number three. What does the man think of physics? A. He hated it. B. He was extremely good at it. C. He was terribly good at it. D. He loved it. Questions 4 through 6 refer to the following conversation. Questions 4 through 6 refer to the following conversation. Our math teacher makes us wear safety glasses when we're using our tablet computers. I hate them. They make us all look so silly. Wearing them amounts to nothing less than a fashion crime. Yes, but protecting your eyes from harmful rays is very important. Otherwise, they might cause some serious damage to your eyes. Well, I guess it is better to look stupid than to risk damaging our eyes. But I do think that the gas masks we have to wear while studying English are a little excessive. What kind of computers are mentioned by the woman? A. Phablets. B. Desktop computers. C. Laptop computers. D. Tablet computers. Number 5. According to the man, what do the safety glasses do? A. Hurt your face. B. Protect your eyes against radiation. C. Hurt your eyes. D. Make you look ridiculous. Number 6. What does the woman say about her English classes? A. The students have to wear gas masks. B. She feels stupid when she speaks. C. English grammar isn't difficult. D. You have to be obsessive. Questions 4 through 6 refer to the following conversation. It looks like I'll be doing physics next year. To be honest though, I don't really want to take it. I used to enjoy it and I'm quite good at it, but I just don't see the point. The truth is, it's my mother's choice. She wants me to become an engineer like my father and eventually take over the family business. Just the thought of it makes me quite uncomfortable and I don't know if I could do it. Frankly, the thought of working for the rest of my life designing and building roads and bridges is quite a scary one. 
I really thought that teenagers should have a legal right to refuse when parents force them to do something against their will. We should be able to decide our own future. My dreams have always been to become a musician. Did the speaker like doing physics? Why doesn't the speaker want to become an engineer? What legal right does the speaker think teenagers should have? I have been teaching archaeology at a public university for over 20 years. I have always wanted to be an archaeologist. Archaeologists examine the artifacts, inscriptions, and monuments of historic or prehistoric peoples and their cultures. They closely study and analyze these and other remains. Even as a young child, I was fascinated with the culture of ancient Britain. I learned how to recite the names of England's most famous monuments before I knew about nursery rhymes. The university where I work is in the countryside, very close to an area containing many stone circles. All of them are extremely enigmatic. My husband and I like to go there on the weekends. We walk around and never cease to wonder how and why they were built and what they mean to this present generation. Number four, what does the speaker do? Number five, where is the location of her university? Number six, what does she say about the stone circles? <laughs> 